She sells seashells by the seashore. I can do that faster. She sells seashells by the seashore. There, try to beat that. Moving away from highbrow poetry, let's now turn our attention to prose. In a few weeks, I'll be launching the 10th Agora Mystery. It is a little bittersweet because it's the last of Carl's grand adventures. But don't worry, there will be more adventures after this, but before it, because this is his last, but because he's writing from the future, he can write about past, well, you, I think you understand. If you've read the other Agora Mysteries, this one, I hope, clears up some questions you may have about the characters. Most importantly, it tells about the end of Thomas Drake, Carl's principal nemesis. It also tells how Carl lost his wife. In the seventh story, Eggs Over Arsenic, I mentioned that Carl had a wife, but their marriage was short-lived, and this explains what happened. And so, here is the first chapter of the tenth Agora mystery, which should be out next month, The Eye of the New. And by the way, I reserve the right to change each and every word, especially the misspelled ones. Chapter 1 August 3rd, 1890, Carl Brook, Boston Since my last missive, I have received numerous letters encouraging me to write on a most difficult subject, the passing of my wife. Indeed, I have received equally numerous letters imploring me not to write on the same subject. It would be too painful a memory for me to relate, they said. It would tarnish my honor, they suggested. Whereas this is all true, I made a solemn promise to my readership almost from the beginning that I would tell of my final encounter with Thomas Drake. Unfortunately, I cannot speak of the end of Drake without speaking first of Anne. As difficult as it is, my honor dictates I keep my word to my readers, and I hold to the hope that it will somehow be cathartic. In my forty-eighth year, I met Anne. We were soon married, and we enjoyed five years of complete marital bliss. This resulted in the light of my life in my old age, our daughter, Mary. The greatest disaster of my life struck in the winter of 1877, the 53rd year of my life, when my dear wife died in childbirth. What I share now is that sad story, and of Thomas Drake's ties to that tragic affair. While preparing my notes, long forgotten and blissful memories of those days so long ago have returned and brought great comfort to Mary and me. Through smiles and tears, my daughter and I spent many hours returning to those times and patching together these nearly forgotten memories. For that, I am grateful. I readily admit that pinning the Agora Society adventures has helped lift me from a gloomy existence. Having lost my wife and having outlived all my old friends, I can, in a way, resurrect and meet each of them once again through these letters. For that, I am grateful to Mr. Gaines from the Boston Globe for encouraging me to pick up my pen and once more bring life to my extended Agora family. That these words have also elicited an interest in others is a double blessing. But the story I'm about to tell is not a happy one. Whilst reading these words, you may doubt my sanity or question my morality. If so, you are not alone. Well, the story will come out in just a few weeks. Now, if you're watching this after November of 2018, it's out there now. Just search for it at all the online bookstores. The Eye of Banu by Clay Baldwell. Until next time, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Bye-bye.